Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all the crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? So good, everybody. We have some exciting stuff coming up. We're going to Europa, London, Dublin, Birmingham. We're also going to Los Angeles in May. Um, May, all of May. This is all happening in May. <laughs> Go get tickets for that stuff over at watchoutcrappens.com um, because it's going to be really exciting for us. Also, this is Vanderpump Rules, so welcome to that show. Um, you guys have been asking for Vanderpump Villa. You've nagged us enough. And we're going to do it. We're, we have You've to relented. Do it. So there have already been four episodes. So we're going to catch up with all those in a special two part bonus episode next week, uh, Monday on our Patreon. Thank you, everybody, for being part of our Patreon, for being part of our show. We don't care if you're part of Patreon or just here. Just, we're in your ears. That's all that matters. So, Ben, how's everything going with you today, hun? Good. But I have to issue a heartfelt apology to all the listeners who I let down when I re basically revealed that I don't watch the Vanderpump Rules after show. Because last week, I was very excited that I was able to do some sleuthing and that I was able to piece together two matching pieces of B-roll between The Valley and Vanderpump Rules. Uh -oh. And I was like, hey, I just realized Kristen and Katie are in the same building and they haven't really like mentioned that on the shows. Well. God forbid, God forbid I get excited about something in this world because apparently this was discussed in a Vanderpump Rules after show. And apparently there were people who watched that. And apparently, if you don't watch it, you are you are below even human status. Because <laughs> all week long, Ben, this was discussed actually on the after show. Like, how did you not even see that? Like, you need to start watching the after show because you can't just like be saying things like this was like, we already, already knew this. So I apologize. Like, literal idiot, Ben. Literal I apologize idiot. for being late to the um, housing, uh, housing gossip circuit for Kristen and Katie. This was apparently very public news. And the thing I was very excited about, everyone already knew about. And so I hang my head in shame as a failed podcaster. There, you have my heart. Listen, they're putting a lot on these after shows. It's like their version of Patreon, you know, is what they're doing. And they're like, oh, if you don't watch, if you don't watch this on the after show or you don't watch Peacock, you don't get these scenes. If you don't watch the after show, you don't know this stuff. I'm sorry. I give this channel enough of my time. Like, yeah, enough. OK, and we would love to be watching the show on Peacock because we missed a scene of James's mother last week. And listen, I love a vile person on my television. <laughs> I love it. She is one of the most interesting character studies uh, in a long time. I didn't abuse you. You were raised in a Tiffany's. Um, <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that, but they didn't show it in the regular episode. And there's some things we miss because of screeners and stuff like that which is how you're listening to this in the morning, some of you, instead of waiting for a full day for us to turn it around. Uh, so, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, when I'm old and older and drier, I will rewatch all of this show again. But for now, we get the regular poor people version, the Arizona Bravo. And um, <laughs> yes, the one where you have to do your own detective work to find out which people are living in which building. Uh, so either way, no, for in all honesty, yeah, no, I, I definitely obviously did not see the after show. So I missed that. And um, it is kind of hilarious that I was so excited to announce like information that like a lot of people already knew. And it's like information I'm sure no one really cared about. But I then like don't. the moment, honestly, this the is moment a lot that of, I announced it, it's a lot like, of hand wringing <laughs> over information I could give two fucks about. I don't care where those people live. Oh, and care. might as well, so uh, by the way, let's building to avoid. It's like this. It's like the fucking IRS building. And I guess let's just like nip this one in the bud. I don't think we have to wait until Monday to do this. Uh, Real Housewives of Potomac. There's a lot of discussion about uh, Mia using an IUD. Apparently she used an IUI, which is a totally different thing. So <sighs> we got that one, too. So She's got lots of you, IOUs. You know, there's a lot going on with me on that show. Okay. <laughs> that was not something that was on the um after show for Potomac. That was just on the show and we missed that. That was just where ignorant penis owning people who don't understand <laughs> a lot of things. You know, she says IUI, I hear IUD, and um, you know, hilarity ensues. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, this is VPR, uh, the gay baiting episode. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's what I like to point. <laughs> queer baiting. Nice, nice queer baiting going on on Vanderpump Rules. Very popular this year on Bravo. We've got yeah. Kyle with Morgan Wade. We've got Katie with Sheena's five year old fucking or 15 year old nanny, whatever the hell's going on over there. Uh, so let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into our own little Vanderpump Rules salt burn episode. So, um, Ariana, uh, so we're, it's very quiet. The episode, we don't get the the opening music, which is just like silence as we see the logo, we see the beach, we're still on beach day, and Ariana's sitting there in the sand, in the tent, and she's like, you guys, like, he fucking sucks. Like, literally, what's up with this? Why don't you guys realize he's the worst? And Brock's like, well, I think this guy has been castrated, and he's sitting there in the corner. And she's like, uh... I disagree. He's literally throwing jabs at me and he's not castrated. And by the way, he is not castrated. He is going out, living his best life, going on to other reality shows, be becoming friends with Jojo Siwa, man, doing his 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 show, like capitalizing off of it. This is not a castrated, castrated man. when he just became friends with Jojo Siwa. <laughs> it takes a lot of balls to want to be around that much volume. <laughs> Um, yeah, Brock, please be quiet. Okay. There's a lot of jabs we could be throwing at you right now that just, I'm just too tired, but honestly, shut up. This is not your place to be telling someone to just get the fuck over it. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Living in a completely different country than the person, uh, he committed to and had children with. Okay. Uh, so Ariana's like, uh, yeah, fuck that guy. And he's like, you guys are going tit for tat. No. Uh, he went for tit. <laughs> she went to a funeral. Yeah, like, I don't really understand how you're going to bring, you're going to keep bringing this person around her and then allow him to sit there and be like, she never cleaned up her cat poop and expect her not to flip out on him. And I'm really glad she finally got to have this moment where she's like, well, first she cries and she's, well, the, just the basic moment where she's like, what the fuck, you guys? What am I supposed to do? What do you think I'm going to do? It's like, exactly. What the fuck do you think I'm going to do? Right. Um, remember, um, remember when on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this past season, when uh, Anne Marie was like making us think about Sutton's esophagus at that dinner party, and she was like, "I've just like never heard of that." Being remember that, remember how, that was such no. a no. Mm -mm. <laughs> but so remember weird. when that? Remember when that that show? Remember when that episode aired? When she was like questioning Sutton's esophagus. Remember that? No. I remember how we were all like, "What didn't the fuck?" Talk about like it enough. <laughs> I didn't really like, completely forgot about it. <laughs> but it was like what? Like that? We, we all got annoyed. That was like about three months ago, maybe yeah. even more than three months ago. That was I'm such an annoying storyline. Still mad, right? Guess what? Still mad. This scene here with Ariana was like three months after the reunion. I'm saying this to illustrate how quickly time flies. And like, if someone said to me right now, like Ben, you have to stop being annoyed about that esophagus fight. I'd be like, no, it's I'm I'm still in the annoyance window. Like I'm allowed. So I think that like Ariana is allowed to still be going tit for tat, even though she's not going tit for tat. I think she's allowed to be angry and rageful about what tom sandoval did because like if we're all going to still be mad at things that happened on real Housewives of beverly hills three months ago let alone things that happened on anything that happened on bravo two years ago then i think we're allowed to give ariana a three-month period of being angry at tom sandoval well also you just don't bring him to the same exact places and to say like share a beach picnic and let's just see how yeah. this goes it's gonna be great hey why are you so mad why are you so mad <laughs> um now exactly. i get that they're both at work as well and they have to shoot a show and etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know in that case bring Rand to the picnic i need to know Rand's opinions <laughs> exactly because you know ariana like the the point that you've made Bring Shay. Um, where's Shay at we haven't we yeah. haven't had an update from Shay in a while let's get Shay on the show guys yeah because like you know you've been, you've made the point that like you know yes it's it's unfair that ariana has to be around her ex but a show still has to be shot and like like we can't the cast can't be divided well now ariana's showing up and this is not anything to push back on you i'm just saying ariana is like begrudgingly like okay i will do my task i will do what i'm i'm, I'm shooting with him but now you also want me to be like happy that I have to be around him like no of course not and so for brock to come in and say well he's been gay it's like not not enough i say not enough 
Yeah, he could be castrated and he'd still be he'd still fill out a pair of budgie smugglers better than you, probably. <laughs> just, just gotta put that out there. Uh, speaking of castrated. So uh yeah, you know, I think what you're saying is you just really can't win in this situation. Like, okay, yep. oh, so you refuse to be around him, we don't have a show. Oh, so you are around him, well now you're a bitch. So, yep. you know, I guess it's the no win, the no win situation. Now, as a viewer, it does get like, OK, well, I'm just sick of watching people scream at each other and fight. But you know what? As a viewer to another viewer, as myself to myself, I say, then go watch another channel because yeah. that's what you're in for on this channel. So enjoy it. And this was like the Ariana is vulnerable episode to a certain degree, right, in a little bit. So she's basically like, look, I'm allowed to feel a certain sort of way because he did this shit to me. I never did anything to him, you know? The, and she says, this man not only tried to ruin me, but now he's saying whatever he possibly can to make it seem like I'm a horrible partner. And this is the type of conversations he has about me with all the people are present, then fuck any of y'all who aren't telling him to shut up. Yeah. And so uh, Schwartz is like, hey, oh, hi guys, hi, it's just me. It's a sweet boy, Tom Schwartz, who never does anything. Where am I? Am I wearing any makeup right now? Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the bar because, you know, maybe things should cool off with crazy pants over there. Oh, did I say that out loud? I just don't want to jeopardize the vibe, guys. And she's like, okay, okay, bye. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's, he just quiets down because his fucking good boy act is wearing so thin at this point. And so he looks at Katie like, huh? And she just stares back at him like, stupid. Go <laughs> die. Run, stupid. Die in the sand. I hope a dune sandworm comes and eats you up before you get to the bar. You've got to finish that book. <laughs> I do. I do. Every time I sit down, I just want to do something else. I really got to finish that book. Uh, so the Toms walk away and Sandoval's like, oh, is Ariana getting emotional? He's like, oh, let's just have a breather. So, um, you know, Ariana's still like, you know, he doesn't get it. Like, you know, I didn't do this. And Lala's like, yes, but like, if he were to say to you something like, I, I don't want him to say shit to me. I want him to jump in the fucking ocean. Well, she's like, but then he has no way of winning. No, he doesn't have a fucking way of winning. <laughs> what does he need to win? He cheated, he's an asshole, and now he just needs to go away. That's it. Yeah. That's winning, oh is going away. So now the Toms are at a bar and Sandoval's like, hey, do you have something that's like frozen and delicious that's like not alcoholic? I'm sort of like turning over a new leaf right now, dude. Ah! And Schwartz is like, oh, oh, you guys need to get out of that house together. I'm a good little boy making suggestions. He's like, dude, I love Maya. I mean, don't say I signed the adoption papers and I paid for it. I mean, it's like Ariana, I paid for everything else in our relationship. So does that mean everything else is mine? Yeah. Everything the house needs from like toilet paper to trash bags, the pens, the batteries, the erasers, the eraser like replacements, like the invisible ink uh, pens, you know, like the, the ones you can like erasable ink, you know, like all the different types of pens, like literally every single thing from the stationary aisle in Target. Like I bought that for us. Yeah. Um, he thinks like going to a Walgreens makes him right in every situation like i know where the walgreens is you know so um we know who does that stuff anyway it's fucking ann we know you don't yeah. do shit tom have you forgotten this entire season is showing us what you really do which is nothing i mean granted you pay someone to do it so that's something but um shut up so one yeah. year earlier sandoval is we see the argument of larry what was the last time you went to the store and bought toilet paper or batteries <laughs> And I also like that he keeps specifying the pens in the drawer because that yeah. is such a thing. Like, where's the pen? How do I have 97 pens and I can't find one in the pen drawer? He's literally, literally acting like he is running like an old timey like office full of secretaries that I'll need to write in shorthand. Like, <laughs> like the pens in the drawer keep this place alive. Like, I'm pretty sure in this digital landscape, there's not a lot of need for pens in the drawer at the Sandoval household. <laughs> It's a job that hasn't been important, like, in decades. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to make sure the pens are stocked. <laughs> America's hero stocking the pens in all the drawers. 
<laughs> for all the note taking needs one needs oh gosh okay so the producer's like you got destroyed on the internet for saying that you always stock the batteries and the toilet paper why are you bringing it up again and he's like oh god i just think like ariana's gonna be like in for it like when she's like alone living on her own she's like where's the pens that's all i'm saying bro the reason uh, he's bringing it up again is because the man learns no lessons he learns yeah. no lessons. That's how he can go on stage over and over and still not hit a note. The man doesn't learn, all right? You know, I have to say one of my favorite episodes of Scared Straight is when teenagers had to go to the drugstore and buy pencils for themselves for the first time. And like when they realized the task and the responsibility they're in and how they changed their lives, wow. He's right, Sandoval's right. She does not know what she's in for. Mm. Oh, um, so back at the beach, Brock's hungry, of course. And Sheena's like, well, Tori's coming to the bar, so. <laughs> and they're talking about Tori now. Like, suddenly Tori is a thing. I think the producers were like, what are we doing with this season? Nothing's happening. Call Tori in. <laughs> Call Joe in. Get these people in. And now we're supposed to pretend like they've been storylines the whole season. I know. Because... Like, I'm, I'm okay with the Joe thing, but the Tori thing just really feels like a strange a strange thing that's been thrown into the mix. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not going to co-sign it. I don't love the Tory storyline. I just feel I don't like, love uh, the Tory storyline either. And I feel like it's just a younger show. And Tom and Katie are giving me creepy swinger couple on vacation vibes where they're just like coming on to someone way too young, sitting on either side of her like, hey, who do you like better? <sighs> yeah. You ever smoked a cigarette before, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. You like bowling? I like bowling. It's like, what? You're, f you're both fucking creeps. I know that they think like dating a 15 year old at the same time makes them like look hip and cool, but it really just makes them look like they need to be driving a beat up old white van around a park. It's creepy. I don't like it. Yeah, I just thought it just, uh, it just. It just, it's, it's like Tori is this person who's just been kind of like inserted onto the show. Like Joe, at least there is like a track record. There's a history there. Also, Joe, I think is just more interesting than Tori. Tori is just kind of like generic LA wannabe reality star, which one could say that about this entire cast at one point, but she really is like, she just is inserted in and suddenly is just gonna like truly go for long, low hanging fruit. So well, then we go say... back. The rest of the cast, I don't think was like that. Cause back in that time, they were like, we're not reality people. We are actors. We're like serious actors. I can't even believe I'm doing reality. Like remember Ariana didn't want to do it cause she's a real actor and yeah. neither did Jax. Jax was like, I'm a real actor. So they looked down on doing it. They looked- But that it, being said, you know, Stassi had put in her time on Amazing Race. Yeah. Right. Well, Stassi, yeah. But the, the most of the cast. But this girl actually grew up watching Vanderpump Rules, and this is like exactly. her in. It's like, all I have to do is bang Katie and Schwartz. Ugh, it's not worth <laughs> it. Go find another show. Yeah. You're, you're going to bang Link and what's what did we say she looked like i don't even know who we compared her to last last week in that outfit like a bag like a bag of thomas's english muffins i don't know that's so specific i know but for some reason that's the energy she was giving in that denim it works so, yeah, it does work yeah it's sort of just like this roughly like this plastic i don't know so um i mean she didn't look anything like it but it just that was the energy uh so tori's coming and james like i think that short secretly obsessed with that girl and um she was like yeah ha, 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 ha. and she, lala's like what are you laughing zetsk and she's like because i know the true story um i know i don't have the best track record with like matchmaking but like i feel like now that kitty is like totally over schwartz and like might be okay to like set him up again so like naturally i like introduce him to like my former nanny tori isn't tori her cousin Tori is, I think, just like a good friend because her, yeah. Oh, I thought Tori was her cousin or something. So anyway, um, former nanny, man, people just can't keep their jobs on this show. Poor thing. Oh. And, and um, well, and, remember, and too, Tori was hired. Tori was hired for because like an, another one of her clients had like a newborn baby, so like Tori had to go work for them instead. Yeah, like Tori didn't know the baby was coming. Tori, I don't know that I would trust Tori, you know? Takes yeah. a nanny job not remembering that her other nanny job is about to <laughs> splurt out a baby. Like, really? Okay, so anyway, Tori's not trustworthy. There, you heard it here first, guys. Tell your friends. So 
Uh, we see six days earlier, Tori's like, oh my God, Sheena, you should help me go on a date. And Sheena, Sheena's saying, yeah, well, I mean, if you want to make up with Schwartz, just go make up with Schwartz. And she goes, oh my God. Just so you know, Schwartz, this is at the club everybody's been talking about all over town, Hotel Ziggy. She's like, <laughs> Schwartz, just so you know, I think you're hot. Uh, back to present, but clearly I misjudged things because when Katie heard about it, she was like, um, no, Tori should, like, date me instead. And we go back to another flashback at Hotel Ziggy of Katie saying to Tori, or Tori saying to Katie, oh my god, I fucking love your hair. Yeah. Which is, like, sorry. Tori like is weird... like a mosquito at a screen door in the summer, girl. She's just looking for a way in. She doesn't care. She's like... She'll just keep bumping up it, looking for like a little crack <laughs> to, to squeeze her way in. She's gonna get there. So uh, Sheena's like, um, but all is fair in love and war. And with Katie and Schwartz, all you got love and war. <laughs> I miss you, girl. <laughs> So um, we're, now we're back at the bar that's by the beach, and Schwartz is like, oh, hold on, Katie's calling me. She's calling me. We're finally getting to the place where we speak on the phone again. So Katie calls from the beach and is like, um, you left all your stuff here. Yeah, but it was for the greater cause. What cause? Oh, for Ariana's feelings and the whole vibe of the beach day. I got Sandoval out of there. Ugh. Ariana's feelings. Hold on. A wave is coming in. The wave says, <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, okay, but you know, I'm just a vibe saver. This me is my superpower, you know, saving vibes. But thanks for grabbing my stuff. I really appreciate it. She goes, um, I'm not grabbing anything. This is me letting you know that it's down here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed that move by her. <laughs> like, you have to come all the way back out to the beach to get your shitty things before yeah, you just get your it. shit. What are you yeah, your shit, shit on the beach for, stupid? So yeah. then uh, everyone goes to the bar, and we get an episode of, let's watch these people who don't want to hang out with each other be forced to hang out. So in a different configuration now. So Lala's like, oh, my God, this place is so cute. <laughs> yeah. It's so, it's so, so cute. cute. So cute. cute. And then Sandoval, uh, there's like a group of girls sort of sitting in one area. There's basically two rooms, and there's like the Sandoval room, and there's the rest of the cast room. So in the Sandoval room, he's there with Sandoval's the Sandoval's room is like the Chuck E. Cheese. It's like where the speedball <laughs> machines and the children are. Like, <laughs> is there anybody that is going to be flirted with on this show today that's not in high school? Like, <laughs> it's like where the Double Dragon arcade games are. So... <laughs> Seriously, it's like, all right, well, you guys be mean all you want to. I'll be over here in the ball pit with these girls. From <laughs> okay, who here wants a round of Diet Cokes and pizza? So he's like, sup, guys, I'm Tom. He says that the, they're the, the girls. And one girl, of course, goes, hi, I'm Madison. Because, of course, her name is Madison. And Sam was like, Madison, what would you like to get your friends around of? Sprite, Mountain Dew, Diet Coke? It's on me, man. <laughs> Shirley Temple, whoa, big spender there, Mads. I got a bunch of quarters if you guys want to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over there. It's such a fun game. So then Tori comes like, hi, everybody, Tori's here. So Tori goes to the other group, and she sees Sandoval toasting the newbies. And he's like, all right, to Venice, to sun and laughter, and continued happily ever after. I'm a musician. Cheers. <laughs> And so then Tori shows up and Schwartz is joking, goes, oh, God, my girlfriend's here. And she's like, are you going to involve me in a conversation? That was acting. I'm an actress trained, trained in the Stella Archoir Theater. Not Stella. Kidding ever. girls. Kidding girls. I'm like, oh, my God, that was like so funny. I was like, that's like so dramatic. But then you were kidding. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I was totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Uda Hagen school. So uh, Schwartz is like, uh, like, so then Schwartz is like, oh, okay, I'd offer you a drink, but I can't remember what you like. Uh, and she sort of like gives him this look like, mm-hmm. And he goes, ah, oh, you like tequila. And she like rolls her eyes and he goes, no, no, no. 
you like champagne? And then she like mugs to the camera, like, sure do. I was like, could you please turn off your sitcom 101 acting class for us, please? <laughs> could you please get your Zoe, like <laughs> Disney acting ass off my show, please? She yeah, does do that. that she so like winks at the camera, like, <laughs> champers it is. <laughs> and Schwartz is doing Boys. the thing, like, well, look at me, like, just nagging people and like suggesting that I only have eyes for Katie by suggesting that this girl only likes tequila. And then on Winter House, when I kept calling that other girl Katie the whole time, it's like, oh, God, we get mm -hmm. it. So annoying. So Tori's like, so are you going to ask me out on a date or are you just going to send fire emojis? Am I right, oh. America? <laughs> Cue the wacky neighbor coming in. Come on, Joe Suzu, get in here. Wait a minute. Are you saying that this isn't a date? She has... He's just like, no, but do you want to, you do want, you want to go on a date with me? It's just, okay, cheers to going on a date. We're going on a date. <laughs> she like mugs the camera like it's going to freeze and go to commercial. It's like, uh, ma'am, you're not on a sitcom. So now, it go, now Katie's watching this from the other room, from adult room. And so she's like, <sighs> so she leaves the, she leaves and goes over to cock block and she's like, oh. Where did you come from? We're doing a sitcom here and you're a one hour procedural. Get out of here. Don't worry about us, Tom. Me and me and this me and this girl just talking, right, honey? Right? You're like, this is my day. Katie, you didn't buy her this bottle of champagne. She's that's not even champagne. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's brute. It's brute. It's not champagne. <laughs> that comes. Only things that are made in champagne are allowed to be called champagne. That was made in. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if Katie's really into Tori or if she just wants to compete with me and prove that she's better. <gasps> yeah, well, if he doesn't like me taking girls from him, then he should like try harder. I think someone wants to talk to you, by the way, Schwartz. Oh, sorry. I was letting my previous disdain noise. I was interrupting my previous disdain. Hold on. Let me let it finish. <sighs> okay, there we go. Um, Schwartz, I think someone over there wants to talk to you. Her name is like Madison or Madison or maybe it's Madison. Ugh, you're ignoring her. You're being rude. Ugh. It's like, okay. So it just goes over to the teenagers. And then Katie continues her flirting with Tori. And at first, Tori's like, I mean, I felt like Tori's vibe was like, uh, one minute she's, like, she's with Schwartz, like, oh my God, we're going on a date. And then Katie comes over, she's like, hi. <laughs> but then it changed in the next scene. Um, so then James is playing cornhole, because what else would he do? And then Brock is playing ping pong with Ali Bali. And they're making small talk. He's like, you got any siblings? She goes, no. Well, how'd you like that? She goes, I loved it. <laughs> Ali Bali, isn't it amazing that we're playing cornhole and ping pong without a plane overhead? <laughs> Damn it, stop following me, Southwest. Stop it. There's a big thing. I don't know if it's just on Bravo shows, but there seems to be a big thing going on in LA right now where they're like adults. Adults like playing games that kids like. Because they had that, they're here today. Then they were at circus, the circus place on the valley. And then remember, they were at the other circus fair place here a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, on that date with Joe, where Joe was like, oh my God, what do they have carnival games here? <laughs> have carnival. Um, Ronnie, this was addressed on the after show. So, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I think it's just like, maybe after the trauma of the past, like four years, people just want some like nostalgic favorites, you know, mm. to get them through the day. Fair, that's fair. Yeah, so Lala's like Ariana, we know you can't control Tom's, but like what he does and how he acts, you can only control yourselves. But like, do you feel like there's unresolved feelings? It's like, no, of course not, uh, Lala. No unresolved feelings at all. She's just really angry for the fun of it. Well, you understand that Lala is just trying to make it about her and Rand, right? <laughs> She's like, yes. do you ever feel like he just completely disrespects you? And then when it's the time for the audience to finally understand what you're going through, someone else gets cheated on and steals your thunders. Is that what it feels, feels like? I, I totally know what that feels like. I totally know. It Ari Ariana, do you ever feel like, you know, ever since you were dating your your lovers, that you were like, you now have a distorted view of how much is an appropriate amount of fried chicken to get at a restaurant? Because <laughs> like now I don't even know how much I'm supposed to get for myself anymore after Rand's. 
are you really upset because you don't know what it's like to see a piece of fried chicken without full body crunching anymore? <laughs> So, uh, Ariana's like, uh, she's like, you know, I know the amount of anger I feel. I understand it's not healthy. And she's like, yeah, I wish there could just be like a calm conversation where it's like, I know I fucked up. And by the way, you know, who'd be a really great person for Dancing with the Stars would be Sheena Marie. Like, I don't know, like something like that. It's I wish not just about have a conversation saying like I fucked up. Why, why is it like that? Why is it such a pat thing? Like, oh my God, I wish you, I wish you guys could just have a conversation where he says, sorry. Well, yeah, that would that would be great, Sheena. We'd that would just solve that. fucking everything, wouldn't it? <laughs> Jesus. And our yeah, Ariana's like, um, yeah, but he's never going to say it. He's he's like never even said he's fucked up about the main thing. It's just yeah, but you know what's? Do you almost feel like so when you're looking at him, it's like you just threw me away, like I was just nothing? Because it's so funny. Because that's how I felt with Rance. Because like we had a marriage, and he just like threw me away, and so I was just like, wow, this is probably gonna break the internet with this this, this storyline. So should we talk about my storyline actually? Because I'm happy yeah. to talk about it. So a bit. Ariana starts crying, you know? and um, she's Lala's like, yeah, it's like you create a life with someone, and you get the Hollywood Hills mansion like redone the way you want to, and then this happens. You know, mm -hmm. it's like hearts, and there's no guarantees a relationship's gonna work out. And she's like, yeah, I mean, that's your dream house. And he wrecked that house. And now let's just get you out of that house. And who cares about money? Or, you know, like, it, it's all about your house. Whose side are you on? And why are you trying to get her to move out? Get him to move out. I'm yeah. sorry. I can I can see why she wants to throw these people off the side of a cliff. I get the whole, like, okay, we're trying to shoot a show. And we should probably figure out a way to do this. But to be like... You need to get out of that house. No, how about you go advocate to Tom to stop being so fucking immature yes. and sell the house? They should. Absolutely. So now Ariana's crying. She's really crying. And I don't think we really have seen her crying at all through this process. She's just been, you know, like understandably very angry. And so she's like, you're right. It just, it sucks because I put so much life and my money and my time into making this my dream house. And it was my dream house. And not only did he wreck it, but the way he wants to act like he's somewhat deserving of staying there and he keeps it and, and he just, the digs and there's just so many pens in our drawers. It's actually really annoying. I don't know why. <laughs> And um, she's, you know, she reminds them again, I never did anything to him. Like everyone's acting like this is some War of the Roses scenario where we've just been fucking with each other for all this time. But no, like he was fucking one of my best friends and just fucked me over, guys. OK, let's let's yeah. try to keep that in mind. So she's telling us, like, I keep this armor up because this shit is fucking traumatic. OK, and so she's trying to find, you know. She doesn't know why it's everybody else's problem, you know, but this guy has no remorse. It's just frustrating. So yep. Lala's like, I mean, out of all the ways she could have handled it, you fucking rose to the occasion. You grabbed the opportunity by the boss and you just ran. And that's what she did, girl. Yeah, and like while you're holding those balls and running, like maybe if you want to put in a call to dance from the stars, I don't know, like maybe you could do that. I don't know. So and you know what? One just one day, it would be nice to open that kitchen counter and not find a bunch of big pens when all yeah. I really want are big razors. <laughs> So now later at the bar, Tori's talking to Katie, uh, and Tori is much warmer now because she realizes, oh, I can also just sleep with Katie to get on the show, not just Schwartz. <laughs> the mosquito at like, the screen door. She's like, oh my God, maybe I can fit through this tiny square. Mm, ow, God. Yeah. It's like when you make a wrong turn when um, following Google Maps and you're like, shit, I missed the turn, but it says this route is also the same ETA. You're like, yes. <laughs> Similar ETA. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Tori's like, so have you dated a girl, Katie? And she's like, no. Have you had sex with a girl? Yeah, it's better, right? She goes, well, I would never put any kind of label on myself. I like people. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Katie. <laughs> Real people lover over there. <laughs> I guess I would classify myself as a <laughs> sexual. My pronouns are <laughs> slash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <nine laughs> airy. <laughs> so Tori's like, oh my God, you are so cute. You're making me so nervous by being so cute. I know. <laughs> Why? Why? 
You're just like so pretty. Oh my God, I want to kiss you so bad. And she's like, yeah, I want to kiss you. And Katie's like, you can kiss me. And so they kiss. And, and then like, the audience goes, God. The sitcom audience. The junior high girls are like, oh my God, it's that girl from our class making out with that old lady. <laughs> Thank so God nice. for James. Thank God for James in this show to speak my mind for me. Because I was like, what is, why are we, what is going on? Okay, so it's the new day, right? So it's um joe is uh, they're at a hot dog place okay <laughs> they're at a the, so there's a famous hot dog stand here in la called tale of the pup and it's a giant hot dog stand that's shaped like a hot dog and um i don't know why i thought it was just so funny and i can't believe we hadn't gone to this place before on this show that like lala and joe were having lunch at a giant hot dog <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is that this hot dog stand is architecturally significant, which is wild. You wouldn't think it is, but it is like a significant piece of architecture because it's like an example of a specific type of architecture where the building looks like the thing it's purveying. <laughs> so I just love them being at an architecturally significant oversized hot dog to shoot a scene. We're in, oh, let's shoot this at the arch architecturally significant hot dog. <laughs> Wow, uh, I can't believe that we're showing up at Rand's lunch. Giant hot dogs. <laughs> so, so Lala comes to lunch with Joe, which is super weird. And Joe's like, oh my God, is this a hot dog place? I love this place. Is this a building? It's a building with hot, it looks like a hot dog. Am I supposed to eat the building? <laughs> I'll eat the building. Joe, Joe, take your teeth off the building, Joe. Joe, take your teeth off the, Joe. Joe, you gotta stop doing this, Joe. You're never gonna be part of the group if you eat buildings. Come on, Joe, back it up. Mustard it really up, does Joe. make everything taste better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just stop putting mustard on the buildings. It's not good. You're gonna get ants. Come on, Joss. We look like a Joss. lesbian couple. We look like a lesbian couple together. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna try to push that narrative, but then Katie told me stole my storyline against. So, oh well. <laughs> Am I a lipstick lesbian? And she's like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Thank you for not being a Vaseline lesbian. That would have made this more awkward. <laughs> I love lipstick. You're so pretty. Hey, thanks for coming here. Okay, because Tom Schwartz told me, like, I really want you to talk la la at some point. <laughs> Super important. <sighs> Something about you being maybe like a washed up housewife with giant lips that don't make any sense. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> but guess what? They do make sense. I like them. You could float. You probably float. Do you float? Do you take baths? If you took baths, you'd probably float in them. Okay, Joss, I'm gonna need you to stop biting the tables. Okay, because this doesn't even look like a hot dog. You're just biting a table now. You're just biting a table, Joe. Joe, Joe, no, stop that. Listen, so I saw you the other night at, at Hotel Ziggy, and I saw from afar that you were not okay. Um, you were Very chewing much on a so. pillow. Very you were chewing much on a pillow, so. which was which was strange. <laughs> Very much so. Look, I uh, hold on, I'm serious right now. I didn't feel comfortable. Hotel Ziggy really didn't because I see how much Schwartz loves his friends. And if I'm going to be part of Schwartz's life forever until death do us part, not that we're getting married right now. I mean, we will soon, not in a church, probably maybe a city hall. If city hall was Saint City Hall, because we're getting married in a church. Don't tell Schwartz. But um, I really want to get along with his friends because it's like super important, but they were like totally mean to me. So that wasn't really great. But Potentially, Lala is a ticket to that. And guess what you do with tickets? You eat really hard hot dogs with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, obviously, Ariana and Katie, they made up their mind about what happened. But like, for my own sanity, like, Tom and Raquel, did you know, did you know about that? And Joe's mm -hmm. like, no. It's like, but how could you not have known? And she's like, well, well, I hung out with him a couple of times, told him stories about Charlie Mail Turtle, the one who fell down in the sewer. Ah, whoops. But I'm not watching them. I'm just like looking at Schwartz. Not that I'm like in love with him, but like I did just like stare at him the entire time. Like, in fact, I would just like show up. He'd be like in the bathroom. I'd be like, surprise, I'm behind the shower curtain. <laughs> and then I'd get the shower curtain. You. The first few months I was with Schwartz, I just would stare at him. And the only thing I could think was, how is anything that pasty? <laughs> like consistently, <laughs> that we could go in the sun, pasty. Put him in the oven, he'd come out pasty. <laughs> we, we took a mud bath once, he was still pasty. He's always pasty. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> and I thought to myself, 
is there a way to make a pasty person look even pastier? And I hatched a plan. You just wait. You just wait to see what happens. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Um, so she's like, no, I mean, look, uh, she tells, uh, well, she tells Lala, no, she didn't know about, uh, Raquel and Tom and Lala's like, I mean, how could she not have known? I mean, you didn't, yeah. you guys yeah. didn't. So exactly. And, like they were literally hanging out around. None of us knew we were watching it with Tom flirting with her the whole time, you know, just so. as much. And so Joe is like. Show us has to be honest. I thought Ariana and Sandoval were broken up. So it's crazy for anyone to assume that I'd be like, oh, Sandoval has a relationship with Ariana. It just wasn't a thing like move on, which is interesting because, you know, I, I can see that she's just focused on Schwartz. She just wants to hang out with Schwartz and, and, and Sandoval probably was so at ease with Raquel in a way that she's just like, oh, they, he must not be with Ariana anymore. Oh, well, okay, fine. Whatever. I just care about Schwartz. Yeah, I don't really know what I believe. I just don't know how much of it is her responsibility to care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's not one of their best friends. And Katie showed that text illustrating, like, oh, well, see, she texted me and said she was so sorry, but then suddenly she's, like, with Tom or whatever. But we didn't see any reciprocal text from Katie being like, oh, hey, girl, thanks for the text. This was so yeah. sweet. Hope to see you soon. So it's not like that was illustrating that they were they had this established good friendship. So I don't really know. But the only thing that doesn't add up is if she thought that Tom and Ariana had broken up, but then she went to Thanksgiving with Tom and Ariana or she went something like that. Like, that's a little weird. Like, did she just not question any of that? Did she not think like, oh, maybe they are together? Like, she just never quite connected any dots. I think she pro I'm getting the feeling that she's just like, well, they had an open relationship or they were like broken up, but still staying together for the show or whatever. I felt like she just didn't. We care know enough. so many weird relationships, especially in that town where yeah. there, there's just it could be anything like no one really knows. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people do know not to fucking ask questions because there's a lot of weird shit that you see going on. So, yeah, don't ask don't questions, know. man. So Lala's like, bro, just go with it. Go with it. I have a question. So you and Schwartzy is like the strangest thing in the world. Like you don't want to be in a relationship with him. And she's like, uh, well, we got emotionally very, very close. I mean, I would be there when he would cry about Katie and like, I would lick his tears off his cheek and be like, now let's take this to Olive Garden. And then, I, you know, I just wanted to be there for tea money. It's like, wait, what? Tea money? You call him tea money? It's like, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's weird. It's what we do. We, we call each other funny things because I was like, tea money. And then he's like, Joseph. <laughs> so it's like kind of everything else. He's like, tea money. And I'm like, Joseph. <laughs> and you know what you are? Hot dog. Get over here. Let me eat your face. <laughs> you taste so good. God damn it. <laughs> Just had an idea. What if they serve hot dogs at Olive Garden? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm fainting. I'm fainting in my life and my dad. I can't even tell I'm going to eat this table to see if I'm alive. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I broke my tooth. Um, while I was like, huh, Team Money and Joseph's, that should be like what you guys put on your wedding invites. And she goes, oh, <gasps> mm, that's actually no. a really good idea. Um, <laughs> actually, I already did that. So now we go to Top Golf with Ale and James and Ariana and Katie. They're going to have a wholesome time. And they're playing, they're, you know, they're hitting golf balls and everyone hits the ball except for James. James whiffs he's like ah, 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 ah. katie okay well now we've hit the ball around stupid ball katie do you remember making that with tori that was hilarious lesbians and she's like um, of course i do because she's and she's going on a date with shorts tonight hold on hold on one second <laughs> okay sorry all right, let me get this straight. No pun intended, all right? You're chatting with Tori, right? At what point did it go from chatting to flirting to we should just make out? Oh, when did that happen? When did it happen? It's just like in the blink of an eye, you're making out with Tori. Oh, it's crazy. No one else sees this. Was it because now Schwartz is going on a date, so you thought you should move right now? She's like, you guys think I really care that much about what Schwartz wants? Like, I don't care. It's not always about Schwartz. Unless it was last season. 
So James is like, well, I just have to ask because it's com it's, so, it's just so coincid coincidental. And it, it was the same month that you got with Max Boyens. I mean, why is everyone acting like this is so fucking normal? Let me paint the bloody picture. Katie was married to Tom Schwartz. They were married. White dress and bows and cheers and everybody and stupid slight people like that. And like now they're not. Now they're divorced and fat and stupid. And they're dating the same fucking girl that looks like she's fucking 21 years old. Like, what the fuck is this? This shit is fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> so then um katie's like so what was your conversation what was your conversation like at the bar and ariana's like well um basically lala and Shino were telling me to like get over it and stop being so triggered and katie's like um i don't know what they're not understanding i'm like confused about these girls and james is like well you know what her Sandoval invited us to go paintballing with well, guys, I mean, well, guys and like everyone, like everyone's invited. So Ariana's like, oh, wow. So now there's group texts where I'm just like not included. It's like, well, to be fair, I don't know why you'd expect to be included on Sandoval's group text after what's going on with your relationship. Yeah. And it's probably better for everybody. Like, hey, does everybody want to come paintballing? Don't worry, Ariana. We're not throwing bicks at each other. So you're not, you're not expected to not supply anything. Yeah, that's like one group text I think I'd be happy to be left off of. Like, wow, we get to go into like uh, the desert and shoot paintballs at like with Tom Sandoval and Billy Lee. <laughs> great, great time. Yeah. So Billy Lee, God, still trying to make Billy Lee happen. Uh, or Kyle so... Chan too. Kyle Chan's trying so hard this episode. Oh God, he's just <laughs> he just he's like out of his depth. Yeah. So then um, they're talking about Ariana moving, like finally, because they're talking about the house and the paperwork is with Tom now because she's countered his offer and now he needs to counter her counter or they're going to go to court. So then she's talking about her dream house vibes. Uh, she wants like a little tree house, which is what I want. I want a tree house. Aww. And she manifested hers. So maybe I can manifest mine. Someone get me a tree house. Yeah, you can like start manifesting that Ariana. She's like, yeah, cool. So now we go to California Cryo Bank, also known as the Sperm Bank. And uh, Lala and Sheena walk in and Lala's like, I love being pregnant so much so that I want to carry one up on my own. But like, I want to be fully in charge of my child's. And like, I don't want to ever like want the unknown of like, you may work out with your partners or you may not, or you may wind up in like a custom arra custody arrangement. So I don't want to have to share. I want my own baby of my own. Yeah. Um, and so they meet with Brian, the sperm specialist, which is, I mean, he does look like a sperm specialist, doesn't he? <laughs> he comes out. <laughs> I've never seen someone so excited to jerk <laughs> off into a cup. He's Brian, like, like, literally looks thrilled to be there. He's like, hi, welcome to, any questions about sperm? Let's talk about jerking off. Any questions? I'm not only the president, I'm a customer too. <laughs> to quote, to quote the nineties. <laughs> So uh, he's like, you know, a lot of donors, well, because Lala's like, so what's the story behind a lot of the people who donate sperm? Because I've watched that Phaedra Parks clip a lot of times. I'm getting kind of like freaked out a little bit. Okay. Like they're just trying to like, just looking for cash. They're trying to be good humans. And Brian's like, oh, <laughs> yes, Lala. Yeah. I love that those are the options. So are they just looking for cash or are they really good people who want to help people like me? No, no. A lot of donors tell us they just want to help others. Like, look at this man. He is an heir to the Carnegie fortune and currently runs three Fortune 500 companies. Look at him. Um, Isn't that just a picture of you with like a Groucho March, Marx mask on? So and a boner. Is. Don't forget the boner. Okay. <laughs> isn't this you just dressed up as Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Listen, people come here and they say they just have a desire to help others through jerking off. So <laughs> that's what it is. And now, do they have a desire to jerk off and then afford a hot and ready from Little Caesars? Sure. But we call that more of a perk than a motivator. <laughs> now, if I may direct your attention to Brad Pitt's brother, who has provided an ample sperm sample for you, that's just you dressed like you're in a river runs through it. So it listen, is. get it while it's fresh. You're literally masturbating right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm going to throw a party because in my mind, my daughter was conceived in love. And because that kind of love is taken out of this process, I would like to bring it in a different form. So this kid knows you're here and we've all been waiting for you to enter the world. It's like, um, okay. Well, I, I love the idea. I'll provide the streamers. Okay. <laughs> it's not right now, but that thing away, please. <laughs> I love the, I mean, I think it's fun. I love the idea of like a party where we all go, go through the catalogs and figure out who's the best dad. But I love how she's like, well, my daughter was conceived in love. And now I want to, now, now I want my next child to be conceived amongst a group of petty individuals who all hate each other and sleep with each other <laughs> and cheat on each other incessantly. I want this to be similar to how my first baby was conceived. She might any chance have a giant beanbag chair filled with chicken fat and covered in <laughs> back hair that you could just lie on top of me that would most likely sweat all over me while I held my breath till mornings. <laughs> Cut to 25 years from now, Lala's child is like, hey, everybody, how's it going? I knew I shouldn't have invited that water concierge to our parties. <laughs> <laughs> this is two rivers converging. God damn it. Always be it's careful. It's a bathtub. <laughs> be careful who you invite to your sperm donor parties. <laughs> this this whole thing, like, in getting pregnant, I'm going to be forming families. So right now, I feel like I'm part of something that's broken. Do you know what I mean, Sheenars? And Sheenars like, at the end of the day, you get nothing for nothing. And that's all you can say for the life of the corner. <laughs> so, you know, you're the most amazing mother, and you're going to provide all of your babies the most amazing life. <laughs> but yes, you are part of something that's broken. I, I will confirm that. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Lala. <laughs> Lala is sad because she wants to provide her baby the same sort of, like, rich, nurturing environment that she had growing up with, like, her mom and her dad together and everything. And she feels like she failed her child, and she feels like it wasn't even her fault that she failed her child, and she's not going to risk that again. Yeah, that was a nice model. Like, anyway, the beach was, like, so intense. Like, I am so hung up on our conversation with Ariana. Like, I'm just, like, treading lightly with her now. Actually, I'm sort of just, like, doing a pass doble lightly because you never know when you get that call. Anyway, I just, like, don't want to be upset with her. I don't know if she's trying to stand her ground, but she's not going to win this game. It's just simple. Moves out. Because I can't take it anymore. You're choosing to stay in the house, so I don't feel bad for you well, I think a big part of it is her pride, and she's like, I cannot go into an apartment. No, it's that she found that house and bought that house as well, and then let his stupid ass take out a second mortgage on this house. Why should she let him stay in that goddamn house? Why is it just assumed that he should have the house? This makes no sense. I don't understand people. Yeah. Is there argument that she doesn't want the house anyway, that he's the one who wants the house, so she he should be able to keep it. Sell yeah. the house. Yeah. Sell it. Lala's, yeah, I agree. Sell Pay it. The damn money. Yeah, I agree. So um then we go over to a place called Hair Boss Extensions, which is actually Joe's salon. I would never think Joe would work at a place called Hair Boss Extensions. I think she, I would imagine she would work at some place called like Wacky Cat Hairstyles or something like that. Or like Cupcakes. I don't know. <laughs> You should come get your, <laughs> or just get like your hair done. I work at a place called Cupcakes. <laughs> I know it's like deceiving because we don't serve cupcakes, but guess what? If you're really good, we'll give you a cupcake. <laughs> it's not fucked up. It's fucked up. You should come in. You're gonna love it. <laughs> yeah, or she just would like put up a cardboard sign that says haircuts, like and then just like attach it to the tail of the pup hot dog. <laughs> like free haircuts around the corner. <laughs> um, but you ever it's... seen a cupcake with a faux hawk? <laughs> <laughs> Hair boss extensions. Yeah, I got to the hair boss. Why does your hair look so good? Because I got to the hair boss. Real <laughs> hair boss bitches over there making my hair boss. Because it's a hair boss. Where do you get a lot of hair conglomerate? Mm, they're really going to fuck you up. Mm. <sighs> oh, little boy entering the hair boss. Okay, so hey, Joseph, uh, you can do whatever you want to my hair. I'm in full midlife crisis. Oh, I'm a cute little boy. Hmm. 
well, do I really see you in action? She's like, yeah, we're going to do something really fine. <laughs> and chewing gum today. It's like my thing at work. Don't blow my cover. <laughs> hey, and by chewing mention, gum, I'm mention, chewing mention, hair. I've always been a person that really likes gum. <laughs> I love gum, am I right, Schwartz? Hey, Schwartz, this is where I chew gum during the day, am I right? Oh, you're eating my bangs! Mm. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it's a, it's a thin line between a chiclet and a hair, am I right? <laughs> mm. So, What did you do last night? Go ahead, tell me the truth. You don't have to lie to me. We're best friends. Oh, I went on a date. Oh, mm. Mm. who's a How'd Tory? Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's a Tory? Oh, Tory, is that a human? Where's she coming from? I've never heard of a human named Tory. You said spelling. Life didn't really go her way. I get it. Like, talk oh, about spelling. being bullied by a bunch of girls. That one. All right. Oh, vocabulary like, yeah. is my favorite thing. Uh, anyway, um, so she's been like close with Sheena for like 10 uh, years, ever since it, she was. It. Uh, 13 years old. Got Sheena mm -hmm. has a 32-year-old, uh, was very close with a 13-year-old. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Um, and I just, it's like, she's awesome, you know? Yeah. Well, that sounds great. So you're dating a 10-year-old? Is what you're saying? Oh, that's kind yeah, of weird. You no. Know, uh, well. And she's like, um, so you're going on a, she's like, oh, I'd really like to know why the girls are allowing you to go on a quote-unquote date with a person that is in the friend group, huh? But I, everyone has a problem with me. Yeah, people don't like me because I eat hard hot dogs. And that's just the kind of bullying that I take now. <laughs> Ever since I went to that hot dog place, like, literally, they're following me down the street, like, hard hot dog liquor. <laughs> it's hard. I'm uh, really glad I'm in control of your hair right now. Tell me more about this date. <laughs> Can't wait to make your hair look really, really fucking handsome for your next date. <laughs> Because she's basically handicapping him right now for future dates. You know that, right? He's talking about dating, and she's like, I'm going to fuck up your fucking life. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Joe's kind of like, this is just like fucked up because like she's way more in the fr friend group than I am, but everyone's like hitting on me. Short's like, oh, yeah, and here's another ticket for you. Tori actually made out with my ex wife the night before we went on a date. Oh, isn't that funny? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. How does that make you feel, bro? <laughs> oh. it make well, you feel? it's that's weird thing that she was playing tonka hockey. That's supposed to tonsil hockey with Maloney the night before. Ah, oh, now she's going out on a date with Katie today. Weird. Oh, that is weird. I don't want you to feel like you can't show your emotions just because you're talking to the boss of hair. <laughs> this might be a work environment, but I still want you to be honest. <laughs> Would it be weird if I attached a bun to your head? Oh, I thought we were the hot dog now. Get it? Oh. Yeah. So then we, then we cut to Tori and Katie's hot, hot date. They're making small paintings in her apartment. <laughs> This is oh, exactly I thought they were expect. at a painting plate. I thought they were at one of those, like, you should come here and, like, paint stuff. You know, it's like well, a Build-A-Bear, like an art place. I didn't realize that was Katie's house. I assumed it was her house because guess what? Her place does kind of look like a build a bear art suit. Like she does look like she lives in a color me mine. Um, I'm sure it was discussed on the after show. So my bad. Build a, <laughs> build a... <laughs> or a bear. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, they're making these paintings and Katie's like, this is my painting. And Tori's like, oh my God, that is so good, Auntie. I mean, Katie, that is so <laughs> good. I walked into my sister's room the other day and she was just watching Pop Ross videos. And I was like, oh, Bob Ross was alive when they had video cameras. I like literally knew nothing about Bob Ross. Isn't that hilarious? Go throw yourself in the LA River, Tori. See you never. Um, Katie just looks at her like, I can't believe I'm faking this for a fucking storyline. <laughs> Fuck this girl. I love that Katie can't even hide it. She's just like, <sighs> she's like, can someone get me like Weird Al Shumley again? Because this is really killing my soul. I think if Katie is going to experiment, she needs to go, she needs to be with like a, like a Jenna type from Real Housewives of New York, an older yeah confident woman who knows what she wants she doesn't mess need to mess around with a like a young fuckwit you know what she i mean she needs to be with like kelly a, a real woman she needs to be with someone not that tori's not a real woman you know what i mean like a mature right. woman. i'm sorry ben go ahead no she needs to be with someone like kelly catrone who's just like yells at people and then in her off time haunts a house you know <laughs> yes <laughs> There needs to be a spook factor. And that's why I think it's funny that Katie, like her online, like bullying or whatever she does with Joe, where she's like, she's spooky. And now everyone online's like, spooky Joe, spooky Joe. 
Um, I think that's like the funniest thing to call Joe because I think Katie would do really well with a spooky person. Like Katie is she, she is like such a Wednesday spooky. Adams. And by the I way, was about to say that she's I talk Wednesday. all kinds of mad shit on this show, but you know I love me some Wednesday Adams. That was like my favorite show of the year last year. And I think Katie should just like totally fully give into that vibe and just be a Wednesday and be with like a little <sighs> Just, just flop over into the Tim Burton universe because that's where she belongs. Put her in a Beetlejuice. Hell on a Wednesday. Carter. She's around. Yeah, go this find is, come her. Come on now, Katie. Go, yeah. go, like, be a neighbor who disapproves of Edward Scissorhands, or like be like, just like be in the Batcave and be mad at Bruce Wayne or something. I don't know. Like, I just yeah. feel like she's so she's she's definitely this is why she's miserable because she's a tim burton character stuck in the world of bravo she's just miserable because she's miserable and that's her personality and she doesn't have to just be miserable that's fun i mean i'm fairly miserable i enjoy my life it's how i enjoy my life you know what i mean just find someone you can do it with and not feel bad about being miserable like this tory girl is not going to cut it katie will emotionally abuse the fuck out of this girl two hours into the relationship like i'm surprised if tory didn't leave crying <laughs> So, no, this is not this is not the vibe you know yeah there is no way that katie is going to be able to tolerate like one more conversation with this empty marshmallow of a human yeah so Tom, and also tori heart. with the eyebrows okay i get that there are certain things as an old person that i'm just not going to understand in the world and i get it this is like old queen standing on the lawn shaking his fist at the sky i get it but these eyebrows where you're combing your eye you're brushing your eyebrows with gel like into the center of your face it's the equivalent of the stupid boy teenage boy hair where they push all their hair forward stop doing this with your eyebrows you guys look crazy you look like you've slept on your faces mm. with snot all over your eyebrows and you you look like Something about Mary Cumbangs, but on your eyebrows. Please stop it. <laughs> okay. I get we want things that are new. Find better things. These eyebrows are not it. I'm telling not you. it. So now um we go back to Tom at Hair Boss Extensions. And he's like It's not like, hair temp, it's not hair employees, not hair applicant, it's hair boss bitch. <laughs> Just a bit at work. <laughs> Oh, I think Tori prefers Katie than me. Oh, but you know what though? I'm gonna go to the Mondrian tonight for a singles mixer. Best little boy. I wanna go. Just, <laughs> I wanna go. I wanna go to singles uh, mixer. Okay. Uh you can come, I guess. Oh uh, I can you don't get this. any mixed signals. <laughs> <laughs> can you mix mix singles? You're getting mixed singles? Is that what you're getting? Mixed singles? No. <laughs> Wait, is this only for mixed singles? Am I mixed enough? I'm uh, part hairdresser and part boss. Is that mixing up for you? <laughs> I, I hope I don't give you mixed signals. I hope you come, but I want you to come with me because, you know, we do so well together. We're just great. It's almost like I don't need anyone else. So I can't wait for you with me for me to find someone else. Oh no, I hope I'm not giving mixed signals. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. <laughs> he did exactly what we thought he was going to do in this episode, but we thought it was going to take a season. But nope, he just shorts it right up, right in the. <laughs> Right in this poor girl's like third episode. I mean, what an ass. <laughs> so, so she's like, she... well, I can tell you this much for your your mixed singles. Hmm. They're going to be like, oh, my God, is that guy mixed with hotness? Yes, you're going to look at me. You're going to be half pasty and half amazing. Are you ready <gasps> to see? But my hair looks doing? brown again. My hair looks brown again. Something went wrong. It's like, <sighs> Joe's like, I hate people who don't do hair. You're listen. You are the hair employee right now. And I am the hair boss. Hashtag extensions. OK, don't worry. You're in good crazy hands. <laughs> now, do you mind that I use mustard as a dye? <laughs> you look like Eminem. <laughs> so now it's nighttime. And now we see Katie and Ariana and Sheena and Lala walking slow-mo down the sidewalk. Like the talk about some boss bitches. They're like, yeah, we own the night. And I looked up, they went to a place called, um, it was a bar. I forgot what the bar was called, but I looked it up. And I saw that it was on Magnolia Boulevard in the valley. And there was just like something very funny to me of them walking down the street as if they were like going down Rodeo or Sunset Boulevard, like one of these storied, famous LA, you know, high profile boulevards. It's like, no, they're just going down Magnolia Boulevard in, in, in Burbank. <laughs> like, da -na 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 -na. It's a hot dog. <laughs> it's a giant. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. We just walked by Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> da -na 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 -na. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my god, Arby's is still open. <laughs> <laughs> Cut 
telling me mine. Hey, Katie, weren't you just there today? Da -na 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 -na. That's one thing I just remember thinking multiple times in the valley over the years. I I feel like I always have the thought, they're still in Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to this bar. I will say this. Okay, obviously I talk a lot of shit about the Valley because I'm a dick, but I love the bars in the Valley. They have the best old school bars there where everything is like red leather uh, uh, banquettes and there's like popcorn machines. They are so fun. I love all those bars. They go to one of those for girls night and Ariana's like, oh, by the way, Katie, how was your date? And lots of wait seconds. I didn't know you went on a date with Tori. She's, you know, what's weird is that like the night before she went on a date with your husband. Did you know that's like, God, it can't be any weirder than banging his best friends. <laughs> and Katie's like, um, tequila Katie's a hoe. <sighs> I mean, he can have Joe. It's not like there's any competition there. And she was like, ah. <laughs> Sheena is so Sheena is so Sheena squared in this episode. By the way, everything that comes out of her mouth. So then we go to Sky Bar, and Schwartz and Joe. Sky Bar is where I first saw Brock in real life, and I will not forget it. I was like, Sky Bar. Oh, he's Sky Bar is like a big player on this show. I feel like it doesn't get the credit, but like so many things happen at Sky Bar on better rules over the years like we've so literally watched so many people age at sky bar on the show yeah it's amazing it's like watching those videos um of like a flower rising up from the ground and then blooming and then getting old and shriveling and dying all in like five seconds that's what i feel like the sky bar is to this show that is that is the sky bar do you know one time i went to the sky bar like the sky bar has been around a long time and i remember like 2004 or five going to the sky bar getting wasted with my friend stephanie and then there was like this restaurant at the time called asia to cuba that was like attached to sky bar and there was like this big group of like 18 people having this big group dinner and we got drunk and we wound up like going over to this group and we sat down with them oh, i remember this and we I like we were part thing. of it and we talked with them and it was amazing and they were like have some food we're eating the food it was so good and then at the end of the night I was the waiter came over and was like, Do you want to pack this up? I was like, Yeah, you can pack it up. <laughs> so I took all their food. Their, their, I, I packed up all their food. And I was like, I just got free fancy food. And the next day I like, I was like, and now I have that Asia to Cuba food to have for dinner. And I opened it up and I was like, This is all food that's been half eaten by strangers. <laughs> I was like, this is what this is the worst. I just threw it all out. I was like, what was I thinking? And you know that you're one of their stories, too, because they're like, do you remember that time we went to Asia to Cuba and that weird <laughs> fucking guy came and took all of our food home? What a weirdo. <laughs> and, you know, I probably like it was not the last stop of the night. You know, I was probably like walking to like different bars, the giant Asia to Cuba takes it back <laughs> the entire time. Something you're Asia to Cuba. Uh, OK, so Schwartz and Joe arrive and Schwartz is like, oh, I've got a hat. I should take it off. No, 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 I don't want to take it off. Wait, maybe I should take it off. I'm feeling some energy right now. Uh, you know what they say, blondes have more fun. And so far, it's ringing true for me. <laughs> Sandoval's like, whoa, I thought your hair was just like really short on the side, but it's bleach blonde. Whoa, man. You know, Sandoval was jealous because Sandoval is the one who likes being the one who's extra. So the fact that sh like Schwartz suddenly did this random unapproved extra thing, I guarantee Sandoval was furious. So Sandoval, speaking of, is there with Craig, his new assistant. Well, <laughs> yeah. geez, man, he really he's really anti Anne, eh? God, you just yeah. can't interview for a new job while your boss is upstairs. I mean, for Christ's sake, what kind of world do we live in? Right? So Schwartz says that he went on a date with like Tori and Joe's like, oh, she's where she doesn't even need buildings. And Sandoval's like, dude, like Schwartz and Joe are like on two different pages. Like Joe is looking at their situation ship as like a glass half full relationship. And Schwartz is just like being Schwartz. And it's like going off of like mixed signals. Like that's probably superpower. He's just like so charming all the time. Like this reminds me of like me and Ariana. Like when Ariana and I, like Ariana thought like we were in a relationship and I was like, no, I'm fucking Raquel. Like it's just people get on the wrong page sometimes. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. Only good things happen. Guess where they happen? <laughs> Iraq? What a good guess. <laughs> Not that you said that out loud, but you should have said it out loud because I really want to know. Nothing good happened there. I'll tell you where it happened. On your head. That's where good things are happening. Guess why? Because I'm in charge. I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm a boss of heads. 
Head boss, you're looking so good. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me fix your bangs. Let me fix your bangs. It's my work. Shut up. No one said anything, but I think they're thinking about it. It's so insecure doing my art in the sky bar. And then Kyle Chan is sitting there and he's like, that's not going to get him any girls. I was like, excuse me. You know, go fuck off, Kyle Chan. You're not helping anyone's case either. Get out Kyle of here. Kyle Chan does help because Kyle Chan can just be there like, I'm his friends who owns a diamond shop. Kyle is trying to be a bro, and he's like, hey, just bro night out. That's not going to get him any girls, stupid. <laughs> hey, girl singles, want to, like, flirt with a boy right now? <laughs> yeah. So we cut back to girls night, and Lala's like, I had lunch at a hot dog stand with Joss yesterday. <laughs> and Katie's like, um... <laughs> Babe, what? what did she just say? How did this happen? She's like, well, she apparently just wanted to share her side of things with me. No, I was asking more like a hot dog stand. Really? <laughs> can't you do anything better than that, Lala? She's like, no, unfortunately, I can't. Why would you go to a restaurant that's so symbolic of your relationship with Rand? <laughs> well, apparently production used up their entire budget on that fucking paintball scene. So they just said you can go to a hot dog stand and who might have to turn down free foods. And Katie's like, you don't even know this girl. You have no relationship with this girl. Well, this girl's nothing to you. And I am something to you. So why are you feeling bad for this rando? What the fuck? Well, I was like, I just went and had a conversation. You're acting like I just invited her to come swimming with my child. Okay, so, but why? 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 And so Lala's like, because she reached out to me and said, I would like to have a conversation with you. So basically, here's what's going on. Joe's been cast on the show as an official cast member. And Katie's like, no. Yeah. You can't hang out with Joe. And people are like, no, we're going to hang out. And it's kind of like the Tom Sandoval thing. Like... Okay, well, that's a cast member. And they're like, no, you can't hang out with them. They're like, oh, but we're gonna, because that's the show. So it's an interesting, it's interesting. And it's also interesting thing. that production is just like, fuck it, let's just cast, <laughs> let's just bring it random. But I, just for, I, bring in the hairdresser, Schwartz was banging. <laughs> but I think they brought her on because I think they realized, like, actually, Joe is like kind of appealing, I think, as a character on the show. She's different than the others. She is sort of goofy. She seems like really sweet. And she does have this kind of like earnest crush on Schwartz that's I find to be endearing to watch. And so I think that she's like a good addition to this show. And but for Katie, it's like, no, like, no, I'm not gonna let this person who's like sleeping with Schwartz just suddenly get to be on this TV show. Absolutely not. But it's also an example of a trap. You know, we talk about manifesting on the show because Ali's on it. But it's also manifesting the things that you don't want in your life because you're thinking about them so much. And that's totally what happened here because Katie is the one who really brought Joe on the show. No one else brought Joe up. Katie was the one who's like, oh, Joe. Well, I mean, I guess Tom talked about her as his roommate last year a little bit, but we didn't really see her. But Katie brought her up by being like, oh, fuck this girl. And then and that spooky Joe, crackhead Joe. She's posting about her on Twitter. She's bringing her up at the reunion. So in a way, you're kind of manifesting what you're getting now, which is kind of funny. Yeah. And Lala's basically tells us, like, you know what? Like, she's harmless. I don't think she's trying to roll up and be like, yeah, I'm here to fuck your man. I'm just like, you know, you know, Lala's like, you know, when I say that, like, vaginas don't fall on dicks. Remember when I said that famously? Remember? Remember? No. OK. Well, anyway, I do. That's something I say. But I actually think that, like, when Joe with Joe and Schwartz, vaginas may actually just fall on dicks. <laughs> She says, I usually say vaginas don't fall on dicks, but I think in this case, vaginas fall on dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so then Lala's like, you know what, Schwartz gave me her name to reach out to because like I'm soft. I mean like soft. She's like, and Katie's like, why? She's like, because I'm soft right now, Katie. I'm soft. My brand is soft. This season I'm soft, okay? I'm like Sears. Softer sides of Sears, is, but Lala's version. So like if you was a girl and like who's his friend like that I've met and I see her, like let's see my other friends call her a crackhead, which is what you did. You know, I'm soft. Oh, really? Right now. So soft. I see what you're doing. So I'm the bad one now. So like I'm Schwartz, soft. whatever, but I'm, I'm bad. Soft. I'm soft. So Lala's like, you know, you're not the bad ones. You're just treating me like I'm the bad ones, Kiers. Oh, yeah. So wait, one minute Schwartz is the worst, and but now I'm bad? That's not making a lot of sense, Lala. You know what? I don't care, okay? It's not my job for my life to make sense to you, 
Yeah, well, you know what? I like people who are consistent. She does yeah, a well, brow I... raise thing where she's <laughs> like, yeah, you're getting it right now. Um, I think she's been pretty fucking consistent for you, Katie. Huh? Hold on. Wow, I, I had to like actually look at the video to see if I can still raise my eyebrow. I really can't. In it. my mind, my eyebrow is like all the way up here, but in real life, it like raised like half an inch. I have to say, good job, Botox people, because that's crazy. Okay, sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Continue. Continue yes. the work. Yeah, no well, problem. Well, it's and worry about no Botox problems. bills. Listen, Ronnie, I'm soft right now. It's okay. So, uh, I'm so soft right now. So Katie's like, I'm I need soft. consistency. And Lala's like, oh, really? Because you weren't best friends with Joe. You weren't best friends. You you weren't best friends to Raquel. And we're still holding on real tight to that. And at some points, you got to let it go. And if you want to hold on to it, that's on you. And I wish you the best. And I hope all is good with you. Hold on. Let me remind you how tall my nails are right now. Hold on. I'm good with you. <laughs> Just note that I am soft, though. I'm um. <laughs> This is my soft. This is soft, Lala. This is so back to me, bitch. Back to Sky Bar. This lady walks up to the Toms and their party, and she's like, "Hi guys, how are you? Welcome to Singles LA. So everyone's single here, right?" And Kyle's like, "I'll be single for tonight, girl." It's like, "Okay, whatever, weirdo." So this is why we have a system: green is for single, yellow is for your open, and if you're a wingman, you get a red one, and you get a blue one if you shouldn't really even be here in the first place. So that one's for you, Kyle. Blue for you. And they all choose green. <laughs> and uh, wow, Kyle. Uh, wow. I'm not dating you, but wow, Kyle. Wow. <laughs> so now they start the mingling, and Kyle. Who's Kyle? Kyle. Kyle. Schwartz. Kyle Chan. Kyle oh, Chan. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally just said his name. Kyle. Think Kyle Kyle. Think, um, Schwartz, you need to not always be with Joe, okay? Like, how are you supposed to find a girl, girl? And I'm just uh, a bro right now giving you bro -y advice. <sighs> and Sorry, uh, the, the girl tells there. Sandoval, um, oh my God, like, you're like wearing um, a girl necklace right now? Like, I really like when men wear women's jewelry, like, like maybe pearls or like Harry Styles type things. Like, that's so, I love watching middle-aged men emulate like teenage superstar idols. It's really <laughs> Yeah, man. I wear like a lot of women's stuff, actually. Like, I'm like cool with like a necklace or like I'll wear like sometimes like a woman's top or like a woman's best friend. Like, I'm really good at putting myself in that. So this other girl is telling Schwartz, can I have your hat? Put it, put your hat on my head. <laughs> put it on my head. I dare you. I dare you to give up your hat for a minute. He's like, oh, OK, but can I have that back later? Holy because it's a sentimental hat. Oh. And then, she, and then she's like, he's like, you know what? Yeah, you can keep it. You can keep it. I have like 70 more of them. Oh. Yeah, well, prove that you're, prove that you're like a hat giver and make out with me. Uh, uh, uh. She like goes in for one of those makeouts where she starts like licking the outside of his face. Yeah. Like you just see her, like, are you putting your fist inside his mouth? What are you doing? Like she's putting her like, you never Ooh. kissed anyone like me before because I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Uh, and so Joe walks. Joe walks up. It's like, what intonation? Okay, you know what? I'm heading out. Bye. And she says, um, "Well, I was under the impression that a there'd be hot dogs here <laughs> or Olive Garden. <laughs> there were neither. And instead, like I thought we were going to be there to support Sandoval. And then we got there, and he was like, Schwartz was like interested in other women. So like, what am I? Chopped liver? Oh, is there chopped liver available? I will have that. I do enjoy a chopped liver. Mm -hmm. I, is that me? If I'm chopped liver, can, is it okay if I eat myself right now? <laughs> Random question, is unchopped liver like good and chopped liver is bad? Because no one really ever says, what am I, liver? <laughs> liver is probably actually delicious. Why am I craving liver right now? It's fucking crazy. Does pate count? Because I'm into that too. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So Schwartz is like, maybe it's not realistic to be so close as Joe and I are and still go out and then hang with other women and then have sex with other people. I don't know. I'm just wondering if she's a little deeper into this than me. Really? I wonder why that would be, Schwartz. I wonder where she gets the impression that you're together. This is crazy. I have yeah. no idea. Could it be that you told her you're together and you just don't want everyone else to know because you don't want Katie to fucking attack her so you're going to live this life publicly? like you're not together when really you are together because you know that's what he fucking did 
Exactly. And so then Joe says, she says, you know, I know the truth. And the truth is that we are still hooking up. And we said, I love you to each other. And it bothers me that he doesn't want to share this relationship with his friends. And I'm tired of feeling, I'm tired of feeling like a secret. And like, uh, we had known obviously that they had had sex, but uh, the way she says it this way makes it sound like they are kind of like currently and actively hooking up, which is what we suspected, but we didn't know. And like, that's just like fucked up. Like, like, of course, like, of course, Schwartz is just one of these guys that does that. Like, again, such fuckboy activity. And we saw it. We're seeing this on Summer House Martha's Vineyard, too, with Alex, where he's like, he's like, oh, I don't tell anyone. I'm a private person. That is the fuckboy thing. You want to, like, have, like, a code of privacy and secrecy. So that way you can basically have multiple girls at the same time. But I think his, I think Schwartz is worse than the fuckboys we normally see because he really does shroud it in this, like, oh. Well, I just want to be single. Like, I'm being honest with you, but I love you. I'm going to look deeply into your eyes and tell you I can't live without you and live with you. But I can't be in a relationship. But the reason I can't be in a relationship is because I was so hurt by my monster of an ex that I'm yeah. traumatized. You just have to give me time because with oh, time, then I will be ready for a relationship. But right now, let's just know that I love you and we'll just keep this on the down line. Maybe someday I won't be traumatized. And then I told you I wasn't in a relationship. No, you like literally are sitting there making her think that she's on a waiting list for yeah. when you are ready. Like, you're not ready for a relationship now, but when you are ready, it's going to be her because you're already together. Not, and they have oh, I chemistry. told you the whole time and I've been leading you on this whole time and it's never going to be us. This guy is just such a prick, man. He's such a fucking yeah. asshole. And he's the worst because he's so tricky about it and people still fall for his bullshit. It makes me... It makes me mad. And they do have good chemistry, which is kind of like, it's sad. It's sad that like... You, this is this could actually be a a, a nice relationship um and he can have like, good chemistry with everybody though because he's like that he's like a he's a he's a vampire where he finds the energy and he matches that energy in the room so that the people and the the people the energy he's matching like him because they're like oh it's someone like me you know but better to be a vampire to joe and like have like like they kind of like fun kooky vamp like he could get kooky energy as opposed to like like someone like katie he was just miserable with katie and he never was really into Katie. they had they do have like a chemistry that we saw last week like they have a chemistry but um it's just a shame that his own damage gets in the way of him being able to actually have like a productive relationship not that everyone needs a productive relationship but you sort of just see it there and you're like oh you're fucking this all up so now it's time to go to paintball he's a horrible fucking human being <laughs> i just needed yes. to sum it up that way because yes yeah Okay, I'm, I feel better. <laughs> Thank um, you. An awful fucking man. And you know what? I'm glad she did that to your hair. And I'll bet she is too, because I think she knew what you were fucking up to, and that's why she fucked you up. She's literally like taking a baseball bat and hitting you in the knees for you to go out and date other people. So have fun with that. Yeah, she's at the Carrie Underwood of of the scene. And Carrie the Underwood. Hair is the, the, fair, the hair is the car that she. It's like, so I took a Louisville slugger oh. with both hands. I thought you meant Tanya Harding. And I was like, that's Tanya Harding, not Carrie Underwood. But no, you really meant Carrie Underwood. And that, I'm Carrie Underwood. I'm a something car in my and breaking your windshield. Carrie Underwood has a very specific niche of um, car songs. Either like go beat up the car before he cheats or Jesus take the wheel <laughs> because it's too hard for me. Country song, country artists love singing about cars and trucks. They it's, do. And Jesus, like veiled it's like huge. Jesus songs, but mostly cars. They love cars and trucks. They do. So now we go over to paintball. So Sandoval shows up with Billy Lee and Kyle Chan. Kyle Chan is like, I can't believe I get to be in like three scenes this episode. And now I get to dress up in paintball uniform. I'm just one of the guys now. And, and you so, know that Billy Lee is like, oh my God. She showed up. She's like, oh my God, here's what I think about paintball. Listen, I had a whole set about paintball one time. Like, paintball, am I right? <laughs> if I'm going to get splooched all over, is it going to be pain? I mean, God, this is my life now. Am I right, guys? <laughs> and did like a whole thing that just gets cut every time she comes <laughs> on screen. Are you going to invite tea? Are you going to invite tea to paintball? My, my girl, tea. <laughs> oh my God. You know what tea is? She's a vibe. Tea. She's a vibe. She's a vibe. We should have tea, tea here. Hmm. see. Um, so everyone's there, James and Ali Bali, Israel, who's like a, he's sort of been on the fringes, but he is there. We've, we're, he's finally getting a Chiron these days. He's been around for like two years, but now he's getting a Chiron. Lala and Lala's like, 
oh my god, shortsies, when did you do that to your hair? And he's like, I woke up like this. Oh yeah, was it to hide the grace? Yeah, because I thought maybe you got sick of dying at the wrong brown. So you're like, fuck it, I'm going bleach blonde hair. High five, Ali Valley. High five, Ali. Ali. Ali Valley. Oh, and James is like, I'm the only one who realized Schwartz is trying to hide it because he's getting old. I mean, his hair kind of changes every five seconds. <laughs> I love James just, the years keep going on and he still aged James because... No matter how old he is, they'll always be older than him. You know, yeah. I, I just need to play you this section that happened on the show last night. That is just the most Sheena of all Sheena sections. Here we go. What's up, Sheena? Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? <laughs> well, I know. Laugh. I laughed. But just like, how are you? Hey, Sheena. I... How are you? Good. How are you? Uh -huh. I cracked up. That is just so. That's like so. She you know, like, cause look, this is her from like a few seasons ago. Hey, girl. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. James. Good. James. How are you? Corner. <laughs> She's like, how do you yell corner when you're in the open? <laughs> um. She doesn't know what to do with the pit. Actually, this would probably be her favorite activity because she just keeps going around all those obstacles going, corner, corner, I'm down, I've been shot, corner, corner. So they're doing one of those like wacky, it's like wacky day, paintballing. Um, and another another sign that the producers knew that they were fucked for this season. They're going to paintball and top golf in one episode. That's uh -huh. a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of balls. <laughs> and the game place at the beach. This is three adult game places they've gone to in one episode. Yes, but thankfully they kept their silly editing to a minimum. It was not like, you know, in seasons past, or if it would have been Potomac, um, it would have been like a da -da 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 funny wacky titles as like an introducing Brock as so and so and Sandoval as so and so and da -da -da. they luckily like kept it minimal. So they had to like they go through orientation with the guys like, yeah, man, make sure you keep your masks on because this can cause blindness or facial re reconstruction. Or you can knock a tooth out. You basically be kicked off Bravo, so be careful. It's like, that's like, I mean, no one wants any of those things to happen, but it's like, th those are really high stakes if you're on better pump rolls. <laughs> Super. It's like, Mr. Teen, what the hell are we doing here? Corner. <laughs> so, uh, you in corner, girl. Corner. You in danger. You in danger, girl. I'm, a, I'm not going to be playing paint balls because I'm in soft right now. So, can we play cotton balls? <laughs> I'm having a soft moment, so unless one of those is filled with stranger sperm and being shot right up my badge hole, I'm done with this game. <laughs> so i um, talking like that my vaginal all right it's just time for softer me to... it's soft be soft it's soft phase soft phase lala um so uh there the boys go off to play paintball and like guys listen to me for a second as the owner of his own proprietary paintball set i want to let you guys know do not get in groups spread the fuck out okay it's the same same strategy as talking to girls. Spread the fuck out and then swarm, swarm, swarm. <laughs> so then Lala is talking to Sheener while everybody paintballs. And she's like, it's such a weird group today. It's like 12 year olds here. It's like one of them is 23 and said, said she met Sandoval when they go out together or something. <laughs> and she goes, what's so weird about that? I hang out with Tori and she's 24. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah precisely so she was like you know what like um they're talking about how uh lala's talking about how she got into a little spat with with katie the other night and she was like yeah she got like really upset with lala for like going to lunch with joe and like not telling her i'm like yes i mean like i just got like a hot dog it's just a hot dog like no big deal right and now it's like oh yeah like i feel like really bad for joe like i manifested like her being a boss someday but she only wound up being a hair boss and like i feel bad that that manifestation went that way <laughs> and um she's like yeah well we grabbed a hot dog <laughs> it's gonna make me laugh every single time i grabbed a hot dog with joe <laughs> and so i sat down i was like yeah i need manifest hot dog <laughs> 
And my mom was like, yeah. Well, look, Joe's a little hard to follow. She's all over the place. And I don't want to put her on the spot and overwhelm her. But talking to Katie, like, she's like, she gets really upset. And like, Katie, I'm like, Katie, I was like, she, she said, I would like loyalty and consistency, okay? And loyalty, I mean, that's coming from a girl who just fucked her friend's ex-friend. No, her ex's best friend. What kind of loyalty is that? You know, I know Katie's unhappy and like, you know, like it's like, you know, I've tried to baby her, but like, I will not be on the receiving ends of Katie going crazy. So uh, now it's another day and now we're at Schwartz's apartment where Joe naturally is in the kitchen making bird sounds for the dog. <laughs> Just tweet, in there. Tweet, 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 tweet. Butters is like, I think I was going to help you sew a dress, Cinderella. <laughs> did, did you? Butters, I'm not really a bird. I'm a little sorry. You're going to have to do your own chores today. Whoops, just spilled rice all over the floor. You're going to have to clean it up. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not an evil stepmother. I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Butters, who am I? Who am I, Butter? Am I a bird or am I Cinderella? <laughs> I don't know. They are boss. Whoop. I'm Stop trying boss, to eat butter. me. I'm not actual Butter. Woof, woof. <sighs> So Schwartz enters and he's like, oh man, well, what happened the other night? I'm confused. Am I sending you mixed signals? Because I really would love to, to be in a long-term relationship with you, but I want to be single, single, yeah, but I, I want a bad relationship. Sure. I just want to make sure I'm not sending mixed signals because I don't want us like standing up on the altar and I'm about to say I do. And then you're confused about it. Like, huh, are we dating? Like, no, we're not dating. We're just getting married. Dating, really. Just, you know, we're just here because I like suits and tuxes and I wanted to get married again. Not to you necessarily, but you're here, so we're getting married. I'm just married I'm to like the idea you. of us being friends. So, uh. Your mom's he... paying for this, right? Okay, this is what a fucker Schwartz is. He says, Am I sending you mixed signals? And then he says, Because I know we have such a good time together and we have undeniable chemistry. That being said, I don't want to be in a relationship at all. I want to date other people. That is the definition of a mixed signal right there. Oh, oh it's worse. we have such good chemistry. God. It's undeniable. Well, I would never deny what chemistry we have. God, I can't wait to date other people. This is so hard. This is just unbearable. Okay. But I mean, I want to date other people and I am dating other people because I get numbers. I hook up with so many people. Oh my God. I'm just hooking up so much, but I, I, I guess I can't date anybody. I can't date them, but I can hook up because I'm still a stud. Oh, God, who are you kidding? Your middle-aged crisis is hurting me, okay? Yeah. So Joe is like, um, can you imagine how I feel after being around you for the past year and a half? We have been there for each other. We have held each other up while we cried. We talked about someday going to an oversized hot dog and having lunch together. Yeah, and guess but, who I did that with? But, Lala. But, but. But, 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 shut the fuck up. Are you embarrassed by me? No, I'm not embarrassed, Joseph. No, come on. People are saying that behind closed doors that you're saying that that in secret that we're dating. And she's like, yeah, because you're, she didn't say this, but you are secretly dating. What you are, are you talking about? You've been hooking up with this girl forever and it was a secret you were totally lying about. You're hooking up so with her. Frustrating. You're hooking up with her regularly, and you're uh, going together on little swan boats around a lake, um, and you're playing adult games. So, yeah, that's secretly dating. And you live with her. Yeah, and also you. It's like <laughs> come on. Man. And you guys have like flirty banter, and like you guys have chemistry. So he's like, so well, maybe props we should to hang her out as much. for just being so honest. Yeah. By the way, also, because she's like, okay, so shut the fuck up with this, you know, are you embarrassed by me or what? And then she's like, so I guess maybe we need to not hang out as much. And he goes, uh, no, she, he says, maybe we need to not hang out as much. And she says, or at all. And he's like, whoa, to hear her say that is just so gut wrenching because we just have all this fantastic, we've had this fantastic voyage full of compassion and support and maybe even love. What a tragedy it would be to never hang out with each other again. <laughs> Sir, well, you can't, first of all, keep Coolio out of it with the fantastic voyage. Second of all, if you don't want, if you want to like keep her in your life, then you also have to respect her. And like, you guys, like, she, you're either going to be in a relationship with her or not, but you're not going to be friends because she wants more than that. And uh, he's like, she, she's like, 
sorry, he is like, well, maybe sometimes it is mixed signals because we have such a fucking good time together. I just want to have fun. She's like, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. She's like, I just don't want to send mixed signals. I can't. Listen, you addressing the mixed signals does not mean that the mixed signals go away. Like you're not getting any sort of brownie points for acknowledging that there are mixed signals because you are continuing to send them. Because you keep sending them. You're still the broken roadie. There's still the broken rodeo. You're still the broken radio. You know what I mean? At some point, just turn yourself off. Like stop playing in my ears and then saying, sorry, I'm I'm blowing fuzz into your ears. Okay. It's a mixed signal. Stop putting out mixed signals. It's annoying. He's like, but I love you, but I don't love you. But I like you, but I love you though. But I don't love you. But I don't want to date you. I want to marry you, but I don't want to marry you. I just want to be with you. Don't please don't have my children. Oh my god, I can't wait. What are we gonna name our babies? Oh, it's so confusing. So she's like, would you say that we have a weird connection? Because everyone else sees it, except for Katie. Gross. It's so easy. Like, us together, we'd be, like, disgustingly together and, like, old and laughing and all those things. Don't you agree? Don't you? Can't you imagine us watching Wheel of Fortune when we're 75 years old going, I'll buy a bowel or a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who else are you going to sit there and watch Wheel of Fortune with that can make the sound of the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can be like, remember that time in our 50s when we actually went on Wheel of Fortune and then I attached my teeth to the wheel and went flung around into the audience? Oh, my God. <laughs> Ding! Wheel of Fortune! Where else are you going to hear that, Tom? Where? <laughs> Oh, uh, wheel of mixed signals more like, oh man. So he says, she's like, don't we have like this great, can't you imagine us like growing old together and just like laughing and having so much fun? And he's like, a hundred percent. It's like, see, don't, that's a mixed signal. And she's like, okay, but here's the thing. I have feelings for you. And he goes, yeah, same. And it's not that I'm denying it. And she goes, okay, but you don't have to explain. Well, don't give him that out because, yes, he does have to fucking explain. He does have to Because he's still doing it, like, right now. And she's like, and he's like, Joseph, don't cry. And she's like, look, I'm being honest with you. And he goes, I love when you're honest with me. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Stop this patronizing thing. It's like, look, I don't want to pressure you. I'm just, I'm going to miss the, the laughter and the banter and the free Olive Garden. And, you know, this something like this only comes around once in a while. This guy's such a piece of shit. And I think the real attraction to Joe is the fact that she triggers Katie. <laughs> and I think that's the yeah, only that's attraction to Joe. I think it turns him on to piss Katie off. They've still, you know, like we've said it a million times this season, they've got still got some weird relationship where they just like abusing each other where they don't have to live together anymore you know and some married couples we've seen it on multiple bravo shows and real life are just happier when they don't live together you know they mm -hmm. have their own life and they still fight all the time but somehow they're still happily married and i think that's kind of this couple and anybody else who's going to get involved in this couple is going to be collateral damage yeah so Joe's like, it's just really hard. I just want him to be happy, like massively. He's my favorite person in the world. And I don't care what he says about me, but that's the goddamn truth. I think the world of him, uh, which my response to that is, I think it's time to start meeting other people. <laughs> Because yeah, I think pool. you need to be you need to worry about yourself being happy because this is fucking crazy. Now, on the other side of that coin, now normally this is the point where I'm like, have some self respect and get the fuck out of here. But I can but totally I see what she's going through with this because he is really doing a number on her, and we see it. And this is him knowing he's on TV and knowing how to play his cards right. And he still looks like this much of a fuckwit with it. Like, he's, yeah, I, if I feel he's doing this on TV, her. just imagine what he's like behind closed doors with her. I know that he crawls into her bed and they stare into each other's eyes and finger comb each other's hair. And then and, uh, and then he says, I'm not ready yet. Just to like cover his bases. But then he probably tell, like sells fantasies of like, yeah, imagine when we're going to be like 50 and like going on cruises together it's like yeah it'll be hilarious we'll be on like a cruise and like talking about the people like they probably like do all that stuff and then in public he's just like oh we're only friends i feel like generally bad for her and she walks out of the apartment she's crying she's like i want to call my dad and she's he, he's like oh joseph joseph it's like no 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 like you don't get to do the cute seed nickname right now she is crying because of your inability to be a mature human being Matursk. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't mean you can't fuck around and be single and be honest with people, but you're not being honest. Like, yeah. you can say you're being honest 
all you want to, but your actions also matter and you're not acting like that. I know that he's making I, her believe like, oh, we have absolutely. something for the future just when I'm ready. Just wait for me to be and, ready. It's like, oh my God, you're never going to be ready. You're like, what? you're like buying claim jumper mac and cheese from the grocery store. It's never ready. Like how long does that need to be microwave? Just fucking mac and cheese. At some point, I'm just going to eat a potato, you know? So funny. I was going to mention Stouffer's, but um, uh, no, he he is like look he's in, he's entitled to saying like hey i just got out of this 10 year 12 year relationship whatever it was and i want to be single and i want to have fun and i want to hook up with people and i want to date around yada 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 i will not take that away from him but what i hate is when when people are in that space and yet they kind of sell a bill of goods to someone who kind of has like hearts in their eyes and they know they have hearts in their eyes and they indulge it because they get off on it. It's just like not fair. It's not fair to, to, to those people. And I just feel, I feel really bad for Joe. And I think that, that Schwartz, like this whole bullshit of being like the sweet, nice guy when he's just as like self-interested and self-obsessed as Sandoval or really so many other pigs, um, it's like, it's hard to watch. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I love that's why he stays so close with Sandoval because, you know, he can say whatever he wants, but ultimately he gets to blame. Sand Sandoval gets to shoulder all the blame for everything while Tom gets off scot free in every single thing. It's like, oh, the restaurant. Oh, gosh, maybe the restaurant's not doing well, but, you know, it's because of Sandoval. And also, Tom never shows up and Tom never does anything. I'm the one who does everything. Well, we've watched this show for years and know how much you work. So, yeah. Like, unless that suddenly completely changed, you know, and I, that obviously that doesn't mean Sandoval is not a piece of shit. It's just the guy, Sandoval, at least we know what a piece of shit he is now, you know, and Schwartz, Absolutely. I think, just always flies under the radar. And that's that's the real killer, you know, it is. So anyway, thank you, everyone, for being here on another humongous recap of Vanderpump Rules. Um, for some reason, I thought this was only going to be an hour and look at us now. So. Thanks everyone for being here. There's just always so much to talk about. Well, we sell more shows. We got the battle. We got Summer House coming up later this week. And yeah, Vanderpump Villa next week. See you there. It's the Thanks, event, everyone. The event of the spring. The event. Uh, bye everyone. Bye.